and therefore the definition of risk, and this is the globally accepted definition of risk, it's in the ISO standard, which has been adopted by most countries in the world now, is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. The context for risk is always our objectives, our highest level goals, and it is the effect of uncertainty on those objectives which is risk. Risk is neither negative nor positive. Most of us being a feeling human, we think that risk is negative, but hey, if we don't take risk, life gets pretty boring. And it's the same in business. We'll talk later about uh, risks versus rewards, uh, which incidentally there is no correlation between. As far as I'm concerned, I want to maximise my rewards and minimise my risks. And if I can find a strategy that maximises return and minimises risk, I'm very happy. There doesn't necessarily have to be a trade-off between those two. So, the bedfellows of risks, the things that we always put together, of course, are controls. And we also find that that's a very ambiguous term. It's often used to mean the process associated with uh, providing control or even the assurance of controls. But generally now, and certainly in the context of the international standard, it's used as a noun. It is those things who modify risk. And that doesn't necessarily mean minimise risk. In fact, we don't use words like risk minimisation or risk mitigation now because they condone the wrong type of thinking. We modify risk in keeping with what we want to achieve, our objectives. If you like, they're enablers. And our controls ultimately are linked to our objectives. If we review our controls critically, we can streamline the control environment and hasten uh, our progress to achieve our objectives. And obviously, we use risk as a way of focusing on the key controls that should be subject to a monitoring regime, because if those controls decay, chances are we will not achieve our objectives, so they're vital. 